Oh, hello, fellow Compasses Laminators or Formula One enthusiasts. If you don't know, I'm a Formula One Compasses Laminator. Some of you may know me as English Dave. If you know, you know. Now, what happens when a Formula One driver crashes their car on Saturday during qualifying and they either need to get the car out for the race on Sunday overnight, which means they've only got a few hours to work on the car to repair it and get it out, or they need to get a car out for the next qualifying sessions, which could be, you know, 10 minutes away, essentially. Um, I'm going to answer that question here in this video. I'm going to tell you who repairs it and how it is repaired and how you can maybe do this job. Do you know what I mean? How you can join a race team and probably do it yourself. So, yeah, let's just jump straight into it. Now, as I've already mentioned, I'm a Formula One conferences laminator, which means I build the cars. I work on the pads and... Yeah, we sort of laminate and make the skin of the cars themselves. And majority of pads in Formula One cars are made out of carbon fiber. And if you are a carbon fiber laminator and you're very interested in breaking into the race team, because this is something that you may not know if you just watch the sport casually. Obviously, you've got your race team, you've got your factory team, right? So the factory team are the guys who essentially build the cars, the technicians, the, I don't know, it could be engineers, also HR, designers, aero, um, laminators, trimmers, whoever works on the car, builds the cars, maintains the cars, uh, designs the cars essentially, is based in a factory. Usually a uh, huge amount of people, could be 700 people, 1,000 people, even more uh, in some cases probably. Um, and then obviously you've got your race team, which are the lads that obviously the mechanics, you know, the pit crew, um, the PR for the team, for the driver, etc. right? In order to break into the race team, you obviously need to provide your value, right? So you need to do a specific job. You need to do something that's going to um, add value into the team, basically, right? So there's a limited amount of positions available in these race teams. And uh, if you are a compasses laminate, like myself, it's going to be quite tough for you to break into this r the race team, basically, because uh, obviously most of compasses laminating in Formula One is done with pre preg pre impregnated carbon fiber sheets, uh, rolls, obviously frozen uh, woven material of carbon and uh, impregnated with resin, and then you pull it out of the freezer and then you laminate as and when needed whatever F1 pads, right? So that obviously doesn't happen on track because on track you don't have freezers and <laughs> you don't have pre pre carbon material, do you know what I mean? A lot of the repairs on track are done with wet lay and with uh, essentially dry carbon pieces that could have just snapped off of the car and been collected back and then um, sort of sanded back down where the hole is and then sort of glued in place and then some more dry carbon gets put over it and resin put over that and sort of wetland repair sort of thing. Um, and if you're a compasses laminator, normally you wouldn't be doing this sort of thing. It's quite loud outside. There's some sort of jet or some sort of bad boy flying past. I'm going to have to shut the window for a minute. I can't lie. We can't have some audio disturbances in here. So if you're a compasses laminator, usually you will just be working with this pre-preg. And so therefore you wouldn't get the chance to experience and become experienced at doing wetland repairs, which is something that I'm also interested in doing. and something that I try and always partake in, trying to um, work and do essentially in every part of compasses, right? Uh, work with, know the whole process, because you know the whole process, you become better at what you're doing it. So long story short, you probably are going to have to learn to do some wetland repair if you're involved in composites and you want to be part of the race team, because that is something I'd like to do as well. I've always been saying this, you know what I mean? I always would like to do at least one season for whatever Formula One team and experience what it's like to be part of the race team, do every single one of the races and just do it at least for one season. Get that experience. Now, 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 now. Now, which pads get repaired? Which pads do not get repaired? Uh, which pads are just getting replaced? So, obviously, if something like the front wing, for example, right, breaks, you can just replace that. You can just pull it off, take a bolt out, and put a new front wing on. Not the end of the world. Um, rear wing, a little bit more complicated because that whole assembly with the rear wing and plates, everything, that clamps onto the chassis of the car. So, you can just obviously unbolt it during the race and replace it that's why you never see that happen during the race and when a car picks up rear end damage uh, and the rear wing's finished then essentially they just have to retire the car basically because they haven't got time to be messing about with unbolting things from the chassis during the race however there are some pads which you don't usually replace or you can't really replace like what about the chassis do you know what i mean what about the actual body panels of the car if you pick up some sort of damage in where your radiator is right and you've got a hole in a in, in your chassis about this big and you're missing a massive piece of carbon from there what happens do you know what i mean 
usually the team and uh, will sort of coordinate i'm guessing with the track and trying to pick up as many parts of that as possible where there was some sort of damage at least i know this is how, how it happens in WEC because i know quite a few guys who worked in WEC world endurance championship and did this exact same job but not in f1 but in say 24 hours of le mans for example and usually over there they'll try and pick up as much as many of those damaged pieces as possible from the track obviously glue them in with where the hole was sand the whole thing down to give it a very nice abrasive surface around glue whatever uh pieces might be left over inside and then sort of wet lamb um dry a piece of carbon and then put resin over it and wait for that to dry over essentially naturally and probably with some heat guns etc um, rather than doing it in an autoclave because there's no autoclave on track right so that's how it works okay so you may have for example uh, body damage on the side of your car as i mentioned where you've got radiator and let's say they've got no pieces left so what do they have to do is literally sand around the hole sand the whole material down to make it as abrasive as possible around where the hole is where the damage is and then yeah just apply dry sheets of carbon and coat them in resin evenly essentially in the right uh, mixture ratio of resin to thickener to hardener um that is it basically pretty much but as you can imagine there's a lot of room for error in there and it requires a lot of skill you gotta know what you're doing and especially working in an f1 environment imagine you're doing this between qualifying sessions which might give you 10 15 minutes you know to do this job so you need to know what you're doing basically um and yeah but essentially it is something that you can learn and it is something that you can do unless you want to do another job for a formula one race team on track you could probably i don't know train up to be a garage technician to be a mechanic probably even a part of the pit crew but obviously it is very specific and you need to uh, train up and you need to actually get into an f1 team to be able to do that sort of job right because um, you can't just go to university for being pit crew as far as i'm aware joe can you let me know in the comments i don't actually know this one do you know what i mean but i do know that once you break into formula one team it's a lot easier and it opens a lot of doors and a lot of opportunities so if that is something you're interested in obviously being in f1 world probably does help out quite a lot i for example know a few uh, race team guys or, or some guys that have done these wet lamb repairs and have been a part of race teams and it's fun right and you don't have to do it every race either you can just do it uh, here and there if you're again once again a part of a team and especially if you're a permanent employee of the team you'll get a lot of these opportunities or if you've been in a team for a while you should get quite a few of these opportunities here and there every year maybe do a couple races and it's fun right it's fun if you're passionate into the sport and if you enjoy it um i'm sure it, it can be quite fun right and also doing stuff like uh you know glass reinforced fibers and stuff like that marine laminating if you've ever done stuff like that with wet lamb because a lot of that stuff is wet lamb um obviously laminating the hulls of the ships with fiberglass or could even be carbon various different fibrous materials if you've done a work like that as a contractor abroad for example there's a lot of them in spain and france that probably will help you uh, in wet lamb repairs in formula one as well because it's a very similar setup right you essentially uh, wet lamb dry pieces of carbon but obviously a little bit of trimming involved in, in the formula one side in the repair side let's say with obviously abrading the carbon and um <clears throat> wearing away any uneven surfaces or, or etc right so and then sanding the whole thing down to smoothen it again and uh, etc right so um a lot a little bit more is involved in the repair side rather than the wet lamb side uh, I hope, hopefully I understand. I hopefully that makes some sort of sense. Do you know what I mean? Let me know in the comments if that does make some sort of sense. I just wanted to make a short little video answering how this sort of thing works, right? Because as you can imagine as well, the F1 environment, when you're doing this sort of job, it will become busy. There's people running around you, do you know what I mean? Trying to pick up the tires, trying to um, talk to the driver, different strategies, car setups, etc. People running around, picking up pieces, repairing other pieces of damage, cleaning the intercooler out and um i don't know do you know what i mean in front of picking up like little, little bits of stone from the radiator shields and stuff like that whilst you're there on the floor trying to repair a piece of damage because um the room is limited in formula one garages as well i know they've got their motorhomes and stuff so you've got plenty of stuff to work around there sometimes you'll be working outside as well in the hot sun um so th there's a, a, a lot of different variables to this so you got to be prepared for it do you know what i mean but it's a good opportunity i'm sure a lot of us will enjoy that sort of thing so let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed this video if you got some sort of interesting information out of it once again i'm a formula one compasses laminator um english dave and many other things <laughs> um yeah 
I guess drop a like on the video if you have enjoyed it and um, drop me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if your compass is laminated or a trimmer if you move in this industry or if you just enjoy Formula One and maybe learn something interesting in this video. And if you want to learn more Formula One facts and behind the scenes stuff, obviously there's only a limited amount of things that I can say without breaching any NDAs or some silly stuff like that. So um, yeah, it's limited. Um, also, I know I haven't posted it last week, uh, but I was actually looking at some vans and I now have a van. Anyway, um, hopefully we'll be outdoors once again in the next video. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel, I guess, so you don't miss any more of this uh, behind-the-scenes interesting content that I can bring you. Hopefully, I'll be bringing you some uh, interesting content from abroad as well. Um, maybe even if it's just talking about this sort of stuff, but on a beach somewhere in a nice country, it would be great. I'm sure it would be. So let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys in the next one.